Psychotherapy is that place you go to talk about your problems. Unless you feel like you have no problems, which actually would be a problem. Or if you feel like your problems just don't really matter. Or if you feel like your problems will never ever go away. Or if you feel like your problems will just magically go away. All of those would also be problems. But what if a problem isn't seen as something that had gone wrong and was in need of a repair, but was itself a desperate attempt to survive something? Something that couldn't be seen for what it was at the time it was happening. From this perspective, a problem is just a failed solution to a prior problem, someone else's problem, that you had to live in. The new problem becomes that the protection, whatever form it takes, is something that can't be taken off, or at least not by a conscious act, or by willpower alone. So now you have the additional problem of not being able to handle your problems very well. Meanwhile, everyone around you has no idea how to help and only makes matters worse. What if the problem is not that you lack willpower, or that you're mysteriously fated to be in the company of inept people, but that your problem, even if it was a way to manage something else, now bears something of yourself, and is, in some sense, the deepest signature of all that you had to live through? And who on earth would ever want to give up what makes us most essentially ourself? There's a different type of problem, which is not something bad that happened to us that we had to defend against, but something good that didn't happen, but should have happened, and we had to learn to live without it. The problem in this case is that we didn't know we were living without something. We just thought, this is life, and we don't really belong even though we're not sure exactly why we feel this way. Either everywhere we go, people wind up being unsafe, or we are missing something that everyone else has. But what if it's not because you're living in a world in which everyone happens to be unsafe, but because the you that you've known yourself to be is actually just a part of yourself? A part that was created in order to preserve another, older, more vulnerable self. It was this older, forgotten about, more vulnerable self that had to deal with unsafe people. And those experiences were of a certain sort that had to be cast off from consciousness so this higher functioning self could survive. This self, the self that you've been living in, has been doing everything they possibly can to manage the world, but keeps running into the same problem. Mainly, it's unmanageable. This is because the self you've been living in was created to prevent a psychic death, but it also prevented any nascent self from ever developing normally. So one part of ourselves wants to feel love and get better and change, but another part remembers and won't let contact happen again, since any contact with that forgotten part brings up something new, but also something very old. The forgotten about experience of being an object for others, of living in a world where you as a thinking, feeling person did not exist. This leads us to a central question. Why on earth would anyone go to talk to someone about their problems? Wouldn't it be better to learn to not pay attention to your problems so you could sleep better at night? And how is talking going to help anything? Wouldn't drugs be more effective? You're going to have the same problems whether you talk about them or not. And even if I did talk to someone, how would they know about who I am or what I've gone through? They weren't there when terrible things happened to me. How would they possibly know what it's like to live with them? And what if there was no traumatic event? Would I have a right to complain? Don't others have it much worse? And even if I did start to complain about my life, wouldn't everything I say sound so petty? How would I even know what to listen to? Which voice was important, or distracting, or trivial? Or alternatively, what if I go and lie there and pay for everything and do everything, and nothing really happens to me? And is it even something that happens to me? Or is it something that I have to work to achieve? And what if I work really, really, really hard, and nothing happens? Wouldn't that make me feel worse? Or what if I actually am incapable of taking care of myself, and that is the reason I come? To be helped in times when I can't help myself. Would there be a real person there? Or would I be held hostage to their ego, their need to be helpful? 
a correct or good. Would they have the capacity to feel things that were urgent? Matters of life and death? Or would they talk me out of it? Because they wouldn't see how I've been spinning wildly out of control. They'd only see the kinds of things that I do in order to keep myself perfectly still. So how do we know that it's not too late? That we are who we are, and there's nothing to be done? Or worse, that we died a long time ago and nobody noticed, having spent our time attacking the loved ones around us as a type of life in death? Would anyone be able to see in the shadows? And would we even want them to? Would there be any compassion for the things that come out of the dark when we're in relationships or when we can't find relationships? Would there be any respect for what's actually there or just the perverse delight in exposing something that nobody else gets to see? Or would there be something different than from what we expect, that there would be something to be gained from being with someone who does not see what you see or know what you know, who accepts that, but who is still able, nevertheless, to hear something on a different register. But what is the difference between witnessing and gathering evidence, evidence that could be taken to some higher court so that we could be accused of things that we never knew we were up to, where we'd be classified and diagnosed and kept neatly in a box or file, so that the therapist could remain safely away on some higher perch. Or they would disguise this attitude by being so positive and so cheery, but without any understanding of who they were actually talking to. The scary thing is there would be no guarantee that there wouldn't be any of these things. How are we to know what is our problem and what is theirs? It's as if you need to know yourself well enough in order to be able to find the place that will allow yourself to know yourself well enough. Do we go on blind faith? And faith in what? Faith that we would finally know what was going on in us so that we could be able to change? It's very possible, even likely, that if we knew everything about why we did this or that or where it came from, that things would not necessarily get any better. So again, why would anybody go to therapy? Well, people go to control their behaviors and so on. And sometimes this helps for a while. The idea is if you do this thing or that thing, then you will stop doing this thing and start doing that thing. The irony is, of course, wouldn't it be terrible if it actually worked that way? Wouldn't it be a terrible loss if we were to round up these bad parts and toss them into outer space? What if the way through therapy was less direct? That there was something in us that could be followed? Something less conscious? And where would we go if we followed? The parts of town we didn't think were worth knowing about? Or places we knew about but didn't want to go? Or places we knew about but couldn't find anyone else to really be there with us? And what if someone could go there and follow that part of us? Wouldn't we be in need of them? Or worse, in love with them? Would we do things so that we wouldn't have to feel that need? Or keep things a certain way so we wouldn't have to know what it was that we were afraid of? Would we treat each other as strangers because it's just easier that way? And what if we simply allowed ourselves to be with whatever was in us? What would it be like to arrive in this way? Or to have to leave? What would it be like to encounter the actual thoughts and feelings that were taking place? What would happen then? None of these questions are questions necessarily to be answered. They are simply questions necessary to be asked.